Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup. We've got some awesome announcements and community posts for you. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. Marco Russo and Alberto Ferrari's got a blog post where they're, it's really a proposal of something that they are calling to see inside of Power BI. And this is an idea of visual calculations from like a DAX perspective. In this blog, they go through just laying out the landscape of where things are at right now with DAX and compared to things like Excel, which may be a little bit easier for folks to grasp. And it's an interesting concept when, when you actually think about it. The proposal itself introduces some higher level functions from a DAX perspective to allow you to more easily create items that involve DAX and calculations from a visual perspective without necessarily getting into the weeds of trying to understand all the aspects of DAX, which is really where it, it becomes difficult for folks, especially if they're not familiar with it at all. This is a good read. I highly recommend checking out the blog post. Again, it's a proposal. It's not something that's coming. Uh, it's just something that they're putting forward as, hey, this is a great idea. At the bottom of this blog post, also there is a link to an ideas item that they created, so you can be sure to go vote that up if you feel compelled as well. I think it's pretty interesting. Eric Fenson's got a blog post looking at incremental refresh and Google BigQuery. And I'm, I'm calling this out just because when we think about big data or we think of scale, uh, there's several items out there that you can use from a data source perspective. Uh, Google BigQuery is one of those. Azure Synapse Analytics is another. Uh, so there are there are different ideas. So, and you can take this from uh, this blog post where it looks at Google BigQuery. You can apply this to other data sources as well. The concepts are still the same, but I know a lot of folks are using Google BigQuery and it's interesting to see how this actually works from an incremental refresh perspective, looking at query folding, and going through those steps to validate, is it actually happening? Because that view native query may not be available for you. And you may think, oh, I'm not query folding when in fact you are. So if you're using Google BigQuery or if you're using just incremental refresh against any data source, definitely check out this blog post. It's an interesting thing to look through to figure out how do I actually determine these items. Links as always down in the description below, along with links to all the items in this week's roundup, including some bonus items. So go check it out. We got the Power BI report server May 2020 release. And with that came a new Power BI desktop for that release as well. So make sure you go download the updated server as well as the updated Power BI desktop for that build to make sure that they are in sync. With this also, this trues up Power BI desktop for Power BI report server up until May 2020. So this includes the items that released with May 2020 for the service Power BI desktop, as well as the items since January. And with that, there's a lot of things that come with that. This blog post lists all of those out. Some quick highlights for you. We got the hierarchy slicer. We got the new action types for the buttons. So this includes the page navigation as well as drill through. We got drop shadows on visuals. There were conditional formatting updates for totals and subtotals. So all of those items that we've had since January, those are now, you can find those inside of Power BI desktop. Now, remember with Power BI report server, it's pretty much what you can do inside of Power BI desktop, not what's available inside of the service. So just be aware of that as well. And then make sure you download both the server and Power BI desktop to make sure those are the, in the same you know, they need to be the same build in order to work properly. Check out the blog post links in the description below for all the details in this release. We got the preview release for direct query against data flows. And this does require that you enable the enhanced compute engine for data flows. So this does require premium capacity, but with that enabled, you can use direct query against data flows. So this is a preview. So make sure that you're aware of that but there are some cool things and cool scenarios that you can now enable as a result of having that as direct query. So you're not necessarily importing everything. I do want to caution you though, anything direct query related, just understand that there are performance implications and you have to understand the concepts of interactive query load, think time, concurrency, all of these factors come into play. 
So just be careful, make sure you're testing it and also make sure you're testing it from a load perspective as well. This is just a quick blog post, just letting you know that this feature is now available. It also talks about what's coming ahead and has a link to Dataflow's best practices document that you can go check out as well. We got a roadmap blog for new workspace experiences. This is something that I've just talked with a lot of folks about. A lot of people are interested in, hey, when are certain migration things coming? When does that workspace V1 item go away? You know, every time you create a Teams channel, it's creating a workspace inside of Power BI. What's up with that? This blog post answers all of it. Actually, we'll be doing a video, not this week, but next week, and just kind of looking at this at a deeper level, just to talk about some of the ins and outs and think about what's coming. Uh, but this blog post, definitely take a read, figure out what's going on, how it applies to your organization and what's coming in what time frame. So there's some updates that will be coming in the summertime. And then there's some updates that will be coming towards October and then other items that are going to be past that. I'm really excited about just the ability to block the V1 workspaces and to also potentially hide them. And then also the admin's abilities to just upgrade those workspaces directly from the admin portal instead of going into each workspace individually. So there are a lot of cool things coming. Progress is being made. Check out the blog post to understand those timelines. All right, I want to hand this off to you. What was your favorite item this last week? Maybe it was something I mentioned. Maybe it was something I didn't. I want to know. Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always, from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome. And we'll see you in the next video.